Welcome to the Biobee Chronicles, where we discuss the basics of beekeeping. I'm Natya Tanishvili, and I'm honored to share the expertise of my grandmother, Veneta Stepanishvili, a distinguished Georgian scientist, professor, academician of the Academy of Ecological Sciences, and a doctor of biological sciences, who left a significant body of work in the fields of biology and beekeeping. Today, we are talking about a bee colony and the roles of individuals in a bee colony. In a bee colony, you have individuals with female and male gametes. In particular, female honeybees, aka worker bees, and male honeybees, aka drones. However, among the worker bees, there are two distinct groups, the queen bee and the other female honeybees. Although the queen bee and the worker bees are both female individuals, they differ significantly in their activities. Let's focus on the queen bee for a while. The queen bee is notably larger and easily distinguished by its size and shape. It is 2.5 to 3 cm in length, weighing 250 mg, equivalent to a quarter of a gram. In other words, four queen bees collectively weigh 1 gram. And it's remarkable how much essential work this petite queen bee contributes to her colony. The longevity of the queen bee is also exceptional. It lives for three to five years within the beehive, and despite prevalent literature suggesting the replacement of the queen bee every year, I hold a different stance. Just as a 45-year-old woman can give birth to 12 children and a 16-year-old girl can may only bear one, both bees and humans are products of nature. Each, therefore, shouldn't serve as the sole criterion for assessing a queen bee. The paramount criterion for evaluation should be her egg-laying ability. If a three- or four-year-old queen bee consistently provides eight or nine honeycomb frames of larva, there is little reason to replace her. And opting for a younger queen bee may mean dealing with a less prolific egg layer, so the primary criterion for evaluating a queen bee should hinge on her egg-laying proficiency. Eliminating ineffective queen bees during practical work is preferable to retaining a subpar queen bee. I suggest not to invest years of effort in serving a feeble queen bee, even if she is young but lacks fertility. The reasons behind a queen bee's inadequacy will be discussed in upcoming lectures, emphasizing the importance of not fixating on the queen bee's age. Now let's move to protocols while inspecting the hive. Be sure the bees cover all the frames. It's essential to know that the queen bee won't continue to lay enough eggs if there aren't enough bees. In the colony, the worker bee is the ringleader and considered as the soul of the hive. The worker bee is the one that plays a crucial role in maintaining order. The colony decides whether the queen bee lays more eggs or not. The queen bee, weighing only 250 mg, performs vital tasks. Each actualase weighs 0 0.132 mg and during the breeding season she can lay up to 2,000 eggs in a day. The incredible reproductive capacity of the queen bee is something we'll explore further in details. So, the queen bee has three distinct advantages over other bees – size, weight and age. Unlike worker bees, she doesn't forage for honey, collect pollen, or participate in temperature regulation within the hive, which means maintaining temperature between 32 to 35 degrees Celsius. While the worker bees handle these tasks and ensure optimal conditions for the hive's fun functioning, the queen bee focuses solely on her reproductive role. The queen bee isn't involved in raising or feeding larvae. The responsibility for creating the right conditions for the queen bee lies with the worker bees, including the new to bees, nanny bees, and others. They take on the tasks associated with the larva care and hive maintenance, allowing the queen bee to focus solely on her role as an egg layer. The queen bee rarely goes outside, usually only once in her lifetime, to mate with a drone honeybee. After mating, she rarely leaves the hive, except during the awful period which occurs every few years. During this period, the old queen bee leaves the hive with her brood bees. This is the second time the queen bee ventures outside the hive. The awful period may occur after two, three, or four years, during which the queen bee remains with the hive spending her entire life in darkness. Now let's focus on how we should behave while working with bees. When searching for the queen bee in the colony, avoid holding the honeycomb frame she is on.
The queen bee dislikes sunlight and may fly away if exposed to it for too long. If this happens, release everything, open up and leave the hive uncovered and move away from the area. The queen bee doesn't remember the location of her hive after the only flight for mating insemination, so moving away ensures she won't get lost when the hive is open. There is a chance that if the hive top is open, the queen bee may be buzzing around. The buzzing of the queen bee sounds completely different from the sound of an ordinary bee. It weighs more, almost twice as much, and when it moves through the air, it produces more noticeable vibrations. So this small delicate creature can be easily enjoyed even with a light touch. Therefore, it's advisable to keep a distance from the area. The queen bee may return to the hive on her own, or she may not. If the queen bee falls on the grass, she might struggle to find her way back. However, in a noisy environment during midday with no wind and the right temperature, she can manage to return to the hive independently. While handling with the queen bee, patience is crucial and modern beekeeping introduces the practice of marking her. The back area covered by fuzz and a seedling is where the marking is done. Special Dutch dye available in white, red and yellow is applied to the spot, lasting for the queen bee's lifetime. The yellow color is recommended as it has pretty good reflection, making it visible even during night time. Working with a marked queen bee makes it easy to identify her presence and assesses her condition within the colony. This way, you know whether there is a queen bee in the hive and what condition she is in. Faded wings, a natural aging process, become noticeable, impacting egg laying proficiency and fast color. Similar to a person aging, the queen bee may experience changes such as shinier abdomen due to the shedding of seedlings. Now about egg laying process. The queen bee begins laying eggs from the center of the honeycomb and gradually moves towards the periphery. And once marked, there is no need to search for her. In the hive's darkness, a marked queen bee on a honeycomb frame is easily visible when pulled out. In spring, a gentle approach is crucial as bees are coming out of winter rest. You need to avoid rushing them. Let them adapt to the environment and by all means be cautious when looking for the queen bee. Once found, place the honeycomb frame gently to the side of the hive. Avoid placing it on top as the queen bee may try to escape the sunlight, hiding in various spots. So you need to carefully handle honeycomb frames with the queen bee on it, ensuring she remains secure. Now let's move to the routines. It is the key element to establishing routines in beekeeping. Always keep one or two buckets filled with water nearby and have a scraper immersed in water and a soft brush. Please remember the brush is essential to be a soft one to avoid harming honeycomb frames when removing bees. These tools will aid in efficiently managing bees during hive inspections. Besides this, always have water in a bucket during beekeeping so if you get stung, the bee venom scent remains on the affected area of attracting more bees and potentially increasing aggression. Wash up the venom scent with water immediately after a sting to avoid further issues. Now, why do we need a brush? A soft brush is used when scraping bees off honeycomb frames to avoid transferring smells or substances that might irritate the bees. Dip the brush in water, shake it off, and then proceed with your work without causing unnecessary agitation. When removing a honeycomb frame containing the queen bee, ensure that you have an operational working box with a lid to shield it from sunlight and prevent disturbance to the bees, as the sunlight is the most irritating factor for bees. Remember, bees spend their entire lives in eternal darkness while nurturing the larvae, so they are accustomed to darkness. But when the worker bees, aka female honeybees, surpass 18 days of life, they venture out to forage for food, and this is the time they are getting used to sunlight. Now, when pulling out the honeycomb frame, the bees often stick or adhere to each other with beeswax, and there may be processed beeswax on top of the honeycomb frame. To control to use a scraper effectively, hold it sideways with one hand on top. Slowly follow through so that the adhesive beeswax sticks to the scraper. 
Be sure not to throw the wax outside, instead put it in a pocket. Keep a cellophane bag in the pocket with the top outside to contain the wax or debris. Dispose of the bag appropriately later to avoid attracting bees with any lingering scents. You want to incorporate these practices into your working routine for a smoother experience with bees. Now what about an apron? Wearing an apron with at least one pocket is crucial when working with bees, but ensure the pocket has a layered cellophane package with a small piece hanging out for disposing of beeswax or debris, and don't forget to keep a scraper in the pocket too. Apron with pockets is useful for carrying necessary inventory and items during your work with bees. A small pairing saw similar to a jigsaw can be handy for adjusting honeycomb frames with millimeter differences. Ensure the frames fit snugly into the hive to facilitate proper placement of textiles and secure pantry closure. This attention to detail prevents potential openings for bees. Having the necessary tools like a small saw is crucial for effective beekeeping practices and as we said before, don't ever forget to keep water on hand for hand washing during your work. Now when entering the apiary, start by observing the colonies near their entrances. The ones with the intense bees activities like bees coming in and out rapidly are generally considered good colonies. Conversely, colonies with minimal bee movements suggest weakness or potential illness. It's crucial to prioritize inspecting healthy colonies first. After checking a weaker colony to avoid cross-contamination, take precautions by washing your hands delicately hanging the used scraper over a flame for disinfection. Following a systematic approach helps maintain the health of the overall apiary. However, during disease-specific inspections, the order may vary and this will be covered in detail in a delicate lecture on diseases. So, understanding the intricacies of beekeeping requires patience, attention to detail, and a deep appreciation for the delicate balance within a hive, from the remarkable longevity of the queen bee to the careful management of colonies. Each aspect plays a crucial role in the world of beekeeping. If you enjoy our channel, please subscribe and share it with friends who are interested in beekeeping. This would be a fantastic way to support our podcast. Until next time, happy beekeeping and may the hum of bees continue to echo in the gardens of curiosity.